Plants are subject to damage by a variety of pests, which are anything that causes injury or loss to a plant. Pests can be broken down into the five categories, insects and related pests, weeds, nematodes, plant diseases, and rodents and other animals. I'm Dr. DeBusk and this video identifies the five categories of pests that attack plants and provides environmentally sound practices to control these pests. Insects are animals with three distinct body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen, three pairs of legs, and one, two, or no pairs of wings. Any deviation from this definition is called an insect-related pest. Insects can be classified in two different ways. The first way is based on the feeding habits of the insect. Chewing insects use mandibles for chewing plant parts such as leaves, stems, roots, fruits, flowers, and petals. Examples of chewing insects are grubs and caterpillar larvae, adult beetles, and adult grasshoppers. Symptoms of damage caused by chewing insects include defoliation, caterpillars, root damage, wireworms, and boring, which is when the insect makes channels in succulent tissues, like corn borers. Piercing sucking insects pierces the leaves and sucks out the juices. Examples are aphids, leafhoppers, scales, mealybugs, thrips, and of course, mosquitoes. The second way that insects can be classified is based on their life cycle. Insects, like all living organisms, have a specific life cycle that consists of various stages of growth and development, starting from an egg and progressing on to an adult. The gradual development of the insect is called metamorphosis. The three types of metamorphosis are incomplete metamorphosis, such as the grasshopper, complete metamorphosis, such as the butterfly, and no metamorphosis, such as silverfish. In incomplete metamorphosis, the immature is a nymph that looks similar to the adult. In complete metamorphosis, the immature is a larvae, then a pupae before becoming an adult. The immature stages look different than the adult. They also feed on different plants or plant parts. Here are just a few arthropods that are harmful to horticultural crops. Aphids attack the young leaves and the growing tips of stems and young leaves. The most common aphid species is the green peach aphid, which attacks many ornamental orchard and vegetable crops. Aphids have sucking mouthparts, which cause physical damage to plants and also spread a number of viruses. The Colorado potato beetle larvae and adult are pests that attack tomato, eggplant, and a variety of other crops. Spider mites are not true insects. They have piercing and sucking mouthparts and live on the undersides of leaves. Spider mites attack a variety of crops, including vegetables, fruits, nuts, and ornamentals. The codling mouth attacks apples, pears, and walnuts. The larvae cause an unsightly appearance because they tunnel into the fruits. Whiteflies attack a variety of garden plants, including tomatoes, potatoes, geraniums, fuchsia, gardenias, and many others. Many whiteflies have developed resistance to pesticide. The cabbage looper is one of the most common garden caterpillars. The larvae make holes or completely devour plants in the cabbage family and many other garden species. Not all insects are harmful. A variety of insects are very useful for biological control, including praying mantis, ladybird beetles, larvae of green lacewings, parasitoid wasps, cryptolemus, and predatory mites. Other beneficial uses of insects are for pollination and for the products they make, such as honey, beeswax, and silk. Even though insects may have many beneficial effects, Many types of insects, if left uncontrolled, can cause dramatic losses in crop yields and overall plant quality. Nematodes are worm-like invertebrates that lack appendages, are non-segmented, and are found in the soil. Some nematodes are beneficial, whereas others cause major problems in a wide range of horticultural crops. The most common nematodes are the root knot and cyst nematodes. Nematodes feed by penetrating root cells with a hollow style mouth structure and injecting enzymes into the cells causing digestion of the root cell. Nematodes can also cause secondary infections by fungi and bacteria. The root knot nematode produces irregular shaped knots that disrupt nutrient flow in plants and lead to yellowing and stunted growth in plants. Nematode movement in the soil is very slow. They only move 12 to 30 inches per year. In a natural setting, they pose little problem of moving from one area to another. However, nematodes are disseminated by wind, air, tools, and equipment. Accurately diagnosing nematodes requires laboratory testing. Weeds are any plants growing out of place or any unwanted plants. They compete with crop plants for water, nutrients, and light, plus they harbor diseases and insects. Weeds tend to grow better than crop plants because they typically have characteristics that allow them to grow and survive under harsh conditions. They have seeds that retain viability for many years and can be dormant until an opportunity exists for success. 
A variety of weeds have underground structures such as roots, rhizomes, and others which are used for reproduction. Accurately identifying the weed and knowing its life cycle is vital to implementing the proper control measures. Annual weeds germinate flower and seed in one year, and they can be further divided based on when they germinate, what summer or winter annuals. Biannuals live for two years and perennials live for more than two years. Weeds cost growers billions of dollars each year as a result of crop losses and weed control expenses. Important weeds that pose a threat to horticultural crops include dandelion, Canada thistle, field bindweed, common lamb's quarter, Johnson grass, quack grass, common cocklebur, and large crab grass. The dandelion is a perennial plant that has a deep taproot system, which must be completely removed or destroyed to prevent its spread. The bright da yellow dandelion flower is common in many lawns where control measures have not been implemented and is easily dispersed by the wind. The field bindweed is a perennial plant that has deep roots and can reproduce both sexually by seeds and asexually by rhizomes. It has a twining habit or it may spread on the ground, making it difficult to control. Johnson grass is a perennial grass that reproduces sexually by seed and asexually by rhizomes. This weed presents its greatest problem in the southern United States. Large crabgrass is an annual grass with fibrous root systems and spreading habits. Crabgrass is a problem in lawns all over the United States. Plant diseases are abnormal conditions in plants that interfere with their normal appearance, growth, structure, or function. There are two principal groups of diseases. Abiotic diseases are non-infectious disorders caused by nutrient deficiencies, damage to plant parts, chemical injuries, pollution injuries, and environmental conditions. Biotic diseases are caused by parasites or pathogens, organisms that cause disease, that are infectious and transmissible. The four main groups of disease-causing organisms are fungi, bacteria, viruses, and phytoplasmas. So how can you tell if it is an abiotic disorder or a biotic disease? Typically, symptoms of disorders are more uniform and appear suddenly compared to symptoms of biotic diseases, which are random on the plant and appear gradually. Fungi have been shown to cause most infectious diseases. Fungi are biotic life that lack chlorophyll, grow through thread-like tubular structures, hyphae, and reproduce through spores. Fungal spores are spread by wind, water, insects, birds, and a variety of other ways. Hyphae is used to infect plants, extract nutrients, and give off toxins to the plant. For fungi to infect a plant, the hyphae must enter into the plant directly or indirectly through plant wounds or stomata. Fungi require the right amount of moisture and temperature in order to germinate. Some fungi live as saprophytes feeding on decaying organic material, while others live as parasites feeding on other living organisms. Some fungi live as facultative saprophytes preferring to be parasitic, but can live on dead material or as facultative parasites normally living as saprophytes, but can live on live tissue. The symptoms of fungi include rust, leaf spots or blights, cankers, root rot, crown rot, vascular wilts, and mildews. Usually you need a microscope to see the spores and hyphae, but some fungi develop large amounts of hyphae and spores which you can see. Signs include mycelium, a mass of fungal filaments that you can see on or around a lesion on a plant, sclerotia, small hard masses of fungal filaments, this is the resting form of this, mold, the downy or furry growth of a fungus, mildew, white powder on the leaves and stems, and conchs, a mushroom-like growth, often hard, found on a tree trunk or roots. Fungi can be beneficial as well as pathogenic. For example, numerous plant species grow in association with a fungus known as mycorrhizae. This association is known as mutualism, which is when both the host and fungi benefit. Mycorrhizal fungi enhance the capability of plants to absorb phosphorus from the soil. Fungi also serve many useful purposes. For example, penicillin comes from penicillium. Uh, mushrooms are used for food and fermented beverages and food, bread, wine, cheese, and beer, use fungi for their production. Bacteria do not cause many economically important diseases in horticultural crops. In some cases, they can even be beneficial. For example, the symbiosis of rhizobia and legumes promotes the fixation of nitrogen in host plant roots. However, in a number of cases, bacteria cause problems. Bacteria are one-celled microscopic organisms that may divide every 20 to 30 minutes. They may be in soil and plants that are breaking down in insects and in or on plant parts. They get into plants through natural openings or wounds and move mainly through splashing water, 
plant management or pruning, insects, and seeds. Bacterial infections often produces water soaking around areas where the bacteria entered the leaf. Later, the underside may look dark and greasy. Sometimes you can see bacterial ooze coming from a lesion, most often in the morning. Symptoms include, symptoms include galls, leaf scald, cankers, stem or leaf rots, wilts, leaf spots or blights, scabs, soft decay of fruit, roots, and stems, and sour smelling roots, stems, or fruit. Viruses typically consist of a core of DNA or RNA and a protein coat. Viruses are obligate parasites that get into the host cell and take over the machinery for producing viral DNA or RNA. Viruses are microscopic organisms that can be transmitted by arthropods such as aphids, leaf poppers, and mites. After a plant is infected, the virus alters the plant's metabolism and is extremely difficult to treat. Common symptoms of a viral infection are leaf yellowing, stunting, mosaic patterns or rings, and leaf curling. The disease caused by the virus is named after the plant on which it was first studied, but it can also occur on other plants. Viruses that affect horticultural crops include tobacco mosaic virus, tomato spotted wilt virus, tomato ring spot virus, and bean common mosaic virus. At present, there is no way to eliminate viruses, but they can be controlled using resistant cultivars and programs that control vectors that spread viruses. Phytoplasmas are small parasitic organisms lacking constant shape and are intermediate in size between viruses and bacteria. These organisms are found in the phloem and disrupt phloem transport, leading to plant yellowing, wilting, distorted plants, and overall plant stunting. Like many viruses, these are also spread by insects. Common diseases caused by phytoplasmas are astrid yellows, lethal yellowing of palms, pear decline, mulberry dwarf disease, and corn stunt. Like viruses, there is no way to stop phytoplasmas. However, they can be controlled using resistant cultivars and effectively controlling insect vectors. Both small and large animal pests cause crop damage by feeding on leaves, stems, fruits, and roots of plants. For some types of animals, rodents, the use of pesticides is legal. However, it is illegal to use pesticides on some other animals, such as deer. Understanding the law is important for deciding which alternatives must be sought. The following are ways to control vertebrate pests without using chemicals. Destroy the animal's habitat. Capture the animal and move it to another location. Use sound to scare animals away. And use fencing to keep the animals out. To avoid polluting the environment, a simple series of events must be followed when controlling pests, starting with prevention. If prevention is not possible, the problem should be monitored through scouting and identified. And Integrated Pest Management Practices IPM, should be implemented. The definition of IPM is a sustainable approach to managing pests by combining biological, cultural, physical, and chemical tools in a way that minimizes economic, health, and environmental risks. The goal of IPM is to have long-term results focus on managing, not eradicating pests that keeps risks at a minimum. Cultural control is the practice of modifying the growing environment to reduce the prevalence of pests and include the following techniques. Crop rotation simply means that no single crop is grown on a given plot year after year. For example, if corn is planted one year, the next year soybeans are planted followed by wheat and alfalfa. Disease-causing organisms need the host plant to survive. However, they cannot survive if the host is not present for a two to three year period. Proper irrigation is important to keep crop plants well hydrated to avoid weakening the plant, which makes the plant more susceptible to insects and diseases. Plants that are properly fertilized grow vigorously and have a well-established cuticle layer, thereby reducing access by diseases and insects. Sanitation is the removal of dead and diseased plant debris that harbors insects and disease organisms. Biological pest control uses living organisms such as predators, parasites, and microbial organisms to control pests. A variety of beneficial insects provide excellent forms of biological control for insect species that have an adverse effect on horticultural crops. Several insects, mites, and nematodes have been mentioned already. An excellent example of a microbe is the bacterium Bacillus thuringiensis, Bt. When released into the fields, these bacteria kill various species of caterpillars and beetle larvae. Plants are currently being genetically engineered with the Bt gene. Mechanical pest control uses tools, equipment, and other physical means to control pests. Examples of mechanical control are as follows. Plowing to improve the soil structure, 
mowing to reduce weeds, mulching to prevent weed seeds, pruning to remove diseased material, tillage to remove weeds, hen picking and trapping for insect control, and temperature and radiation to sterilize soil and kill disease organisms. Genetic pest control uses plant breeding and genetic engineering to manipulate plants to make them more resistant to specific pests. Through breeding efforts, researchers transfer the capability to resist diseases and other pests from the wild into the cultivated species and from cultivar to cultivar within the species. Today, resistant cultivars exist for most of the major pests of horticultural plants. Genetically modified organisms, GMOs, carry a foreign gene that was inserted by laboratory techniques into all of its cells. The genetic modification of plants is similar to plant breeding except that it is generally faster. Genetic engineering is typically done for traits that are controlled by one gene, only a few genes, or a small cluster of genes. Traits that can be manipulated include resistance to herbicides, resistance to adverse environmental conditions, improved nutritional quality, flower color, and resistance to viral infection. Chemical pest control uses a pesticide, which is a chemical used to control pests. Pesticides that are used to control insects are called insecticides, to control weeds are herbicides, to control fungi are fungicides, and to control rodents are rodenticides. Pesticides must be registered by the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. All chemicals are hazardous to humans and should be used properly. All individuals working for a commercial enterprise and using pesticides must take a test to obtain a pesticide applicator license. Follow these general safety rules when using pesticides. Use only improved pesticides. Read the label before application. Use the pesticide with the lowest toxicity. Use the right equipment. Use pesticides only when needed. Wear protective clothing. Dispose of empty containers properly and properly store pesticides. In conclusion, for each of the five categories of pests, insects and related pests, nematodes, weeds, diseases, and rodents and other animals, billions of dollars are spent annually for the cost of control and are lost annually as a result of crop losses. Pests must be properly controlled while minimizing any adverse effects on the environment.